Okay, in this video we're going to talk about conditional versus absolute convergence. So let's get started with that. So absolute convergence. Um, we'll say a series, so the sum of a sub n, is absolutely convergent if the sum of the absolute value of a sub n converges. So it's kind of a weird thing to do, but um, it basically creates an easier problem because when you take the absolute value of the nth term, you don't have to deal with things that alternate or maybe only kind of alternate. Um, so one of the things that happens is you can now use lots of the convergence tests. So basically you can use any of the convergence tests that required um, only positive terms. Um, so that's a really good thing. And it's also really useful if uh, the sum of a sub n isn't strictly alternating because we only really have a couple of tests we can use on series that alternate, namely the alternating series test, and that requires strict alternation. So uh, it's really useful in those regards. So that's absolutely convergent. So um, if the sum of the absolute value of a sub n converges, then we'll say a series is absolutely convergent. Conditional convergence is um, sort of like you try to see if it's absolutely convergent, and if it's not, then you say, then you check and see if the actual series, when it does alternate, or when it does have negative terms, uh, so let's, let's just write it down. So if the sum of the absolute value of a sub n diverges, so you check to see if it was absolutely convergent, and it wasn't, um, but the sum of a sub n does converge, so when you don't have the absolute values there, you do get a convergent series, then we say that the sum of a sub n is conditionally convergent, where the condition is that sometimes you need negative terms. And when you're dealing with this, you're probably gonna end up using the alternating series test on um, the sum of a sub n, so that's the two ideas. So absolutely convergent, you just take the absolute value of the nth term and you see if that series converges. Conditional convergence means that after you took the absolute value, it didn't converge, but when you use the alternating series test probably, it does converge. So that'll be conditionally convergent. So let's look at two examples um, and uh, that's kind of all there is to it. So this example is uh, the sum of negative one to the n over n. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to check and see if it's absolutely convergent. So is it absolutely convergent? Well, so we're going to rewrite the series, take the absolute value of the nth term. So now it's the sum of, um, if you take the absolute value, you actually just get the sum of 1 over n. But we know that that's the harmonic series, so that definitely diverges. So at this point, we know this series is not absolutely convergent. So now we're going to check to see if it's conditionally convergent. So for conditional convergence, I see that um, the terms alternate. I see that uh, the terms decrease in magnitude. So that's the absolute value of the term. Uh, those are decreasing because one over n is decreasing function. Um, and I also see that the limit of the nth term is approaching zero. So those are the three conditions for the alternating series test to tell you that a series converges. So this thing, um, the sum of negative one to the n over n converges by the alternating series test. So we can definitely say that this is conditionally convergent. So it's convergent series. It's conditionally convergent because it only converges when it's alternating. Um, and this is actually the alternating harmonic, which is by far the most famous example of a conditionally convergent series. And it's the one you should really think of when you think, um, you know, when you're trying to orient yourself, like is it conditionally convergent, absolutely convergent? Think of this series, um, and it can help you kind of clarify that. Let's do one more example. So we have the sum of the cosine of n over n squared. The issue with this is that uh, because n is going to be an integer, so you're doing cosine of 1, cosine of 2, cosine of 3, this thing isn't strictly alternating. Um, so we can't actually use the alternating series test on it. So we're going to check for absolute convergence and hope that that actually works. So is it absolutely convergent? So first thing you do is you kind of throw absolute values around the nth term. So now it's the sum of the absolute value of cosine of n over n squared. And let's look at that numerator. So I know that the absolute value of cosine of n is less than or equal to one, right? Because cosine is stuck between negative one and one. And so the absolute value of cosine of n is definitely less than or equal to one. Um, it's also positive because it's absolute value. So I'm going to divide everything by n squared. So uh, the absolute value of cosine of n over n squared is less than or equal to 1 over n squared. And also I know that it's greater than or equal to 0. So since that inequality holds, 
I know that the sum of the absolute value of cosine of n over n squared will be less than or equal to the sum of 1 over n squared. And at this point, I've basically done a, a direct comparison. So I need to just kind of state what's happening. So since the sum of 1 over n squared converges, I know that because it's a p series with p equal to 2, which is greater than 1. So it's a convergent p series. Um, because of my inequalities that I've written, uh, I know that the sum of the absolute value of cosine of n over n squared converges by direct comparison. And since I know that, I've just shown that the original series, the sum of cosine of n over n squared, converges absolutely because um, when I took the absolute value of the terms, I got a convergent series. But it kind of illustrates sometimes you have to use an additional test. It's like you, you throw the absolute values around it you're not guaranteed to just look at it and say, oh, this converges or diverges. You might have to use uh, limit comparison, direct comparison, integral tests, like all kinds of options. But anyway, that's kind of a brief look uh, at absolute versus conditional convergence. Um, if something uh, does converge absolutely, which this is an example, then uh, if it converges absolutely, we can definitely say it converges. Um, so I hope you found this helpful. And good luck.